finally, goodbye 2020 and hello 2021. It's all over now, right? Chicken Little, what is it? What's going on? The sky is falling. The sky is falling. <laughs> Run for cover. <laughs> Today, let's explore everything you missed in Disney's movie, Chicken Little. We're all Disney experts here, so we all know the beginning of the movie begins with a little clip from Lion King. I don't think so. And as far as the book goes, I'm sure you're all aware that Disney has a history of starting off with the opening of a book, like Pinocchio, or Snow White, or Cinderella, and the list goes on. There's a famous saying, like a bull in a china shop. And usually when someone calls you this, it means that you're very clumsy or careless when you move around. Even though ironically, years ago, a TV show called Mythbusters proved that a bull is actually anything but clumsy in a china shop. It's a stupid saying, I'm never gonna use it again. Bull in a china shop busted. Busted. Yeah. It's busted. But nonetheless, here we have a store with a bull in a china shop. <laughs> Cash will clear it. A movie that seems to be a go-to for directors to shout out is the old black and white King Kong. This scene here is clearly referencing to that movie. Someone that's more famous than any one movie though is Don Knotts. The mayor of Oakley Oaks was voiced by Don Knotts. Tick tack. And my favorite of him though was probably back in the Andy Griffith show when he was Barney Fife. Golly. Principal's famous too. He's voiced by Wallace Shawn. He's been nothing but trouble. He also voiced Rex in Toy Story. Right, Rex? Well, yeah, no, I don't like confrontations. But this isn't the first Disney principal that he voiced, though. He was also Principal Mazur in a Goofy movie 10 years earlier. Principal Mazur. Then there's our star, Mickey Mouse. If you look, the aliens were wearing Mickey Mouse watches. Then in all the magazines, there's a Cow and Driver magazine playing a pun on the magazine Car and Driver with a hidden Mickey on the front of the car. On the back of the cheetah's ear, you can also see a hidden Mickey. When the aliens are chasing our fearless chickens through the corn maze, they make crop circles just like a movie called Signs. And that one came out a few years before Chicken Little. And that movie was basically about a house surrounded by corn that was attacked by aliens, and they too made crop circles. Only theirs looked like this, and not like a hidden Mickey. Wow. Then I'm sure you've heard of the Mickey Mouse Club, right? Well, when the water tower is crushing the town, it crushes a row of cars, and it's in the theme of the Mickey Mouse song. M-O-U-S-C. That was annoying. The tower also turns into a giant metal ball, crushing everything in its past, including a movie theater that's playing none other than Indiana Jones. And in the iconic scene, it's with the giant ball trying to crush the main star. In the drama world, what is a troubler? Not this kind of drama world, but in like acting drama, there's a common logo that you see that looks like this. It's a happy mask and a sad mask. If you look closely at the theater, you will see two little nuts. And they have the same drama mask of a smiley face and a happy face. A sad face. Sorry, I want everything to be happy. Ever hear of a movie called Back to the Future? Don't answer that. I already know, of course you have. How do I know? Because I traveled to the future and heard your answer. So in that movie, they have a clock tower that gets struck by lightning and stops working at 10.04 p.m. Check this out. Chicken Little gets struck by lightning, I mean, abducted by aliens, at what appears to be 10.04 p.m. What? what are you guys doing? We gotta get out of here. It's like, it's like War of the Worlds out there. War of the Worlds out there. War of the Worlds is a movie too where it seemed like everything was going crazy and the world was going to end. And lights were coming out of the sky and aliens were invading. Ha! Here's a small little Easter egg, but if you look at the soda machine, 
or should I say pop machine? What do you say, soda or pop? Okay, one of the sodas that is called joke. Speaking of jokes, the teacher, Mr. Woolensworth, is teaching the mutton class. In case you didn't know this, ironically, mutton means older type of sheep that is basically ready for being cooked up because it tastes yummy. <laughs> The movie was directed by Mark Dendel, and one of the classmates was named Porcupine. Porcupine. I think there's a similarity there. Feel free to not think it. No. Use your own creative mind, that's a scary thought. I also can't help but to notice years later, it looks a lot like the movie Seeing may have stole their idea for one of their characters from this movie. Whoa. There it is, Wendy. Second star to the right and straight on till morning. Then get this, Alien Mom was voiced by Catherine O'Hara, and the Alien Dad was played by Fred Willard. Then here's where it gets stranger. The very next year in the movie Monster House, the mom of the movie was voiced by Catherine O'Hara. And you guessed it, the dad was voiced by Fred Willard. Coincidence? This dog announcer is a famous announcer. He's Harry Shearer, never heard of him? Yes, you have. He was in a little movie back in the day called Little Giants. He was the announcer in that movie. And then years after making this movie, he was Kent Brockman, the TV announcer in The Simpsons. Then lastly, this one right here is a subtle Easter egg to an old classic. Reports of panic and mayhem are still pouring in after yet another chicken little incident last night. In one instance, an entire family of lemmings was sent running in fear. But unable to find a cliff, they instead began throwing themselves from the nearest park bench. So the thought here is in one of Disney's old 1958's nature films called White Wilderness, they showed that lemmings will gather into large groups and create a mass suicide by jumping off cliffs. Weird. But what's weird is it was only later discovered that it's actually not true. And Disney, in fact, actually hired locals to catch a bunch of lemmings, and then they took them to the top of a hill and forced them off the cliff and filmed it to make a dramatic documentary that we gobbled up as truth and pretended that was just how nature really works. Fun fact is most of the time when you're watching these rare scenes of something in the wild doing something spectacular, like a big cat and wolves fighting over a dead deer, chances are that deer was actually roadkill, that's right, just hit by somebody's truck, then domesticated wild animals put in a controlled environment and forced into these situations to fight over the dead chunk of meat because it's real nature. True story. Why? Because it doesn't happen. Because in the wild, it would be almost never where you would find a rare opportunity to see these two animals attacking. But that's a whole nother story I could go into great detail with you on another day. That's if you want me to. And with that being said, let me know what's the last movie that you watched and what movie do you want us to talk about next. And until our next adventure, gents and gentlets, remember, share a smile. They are contagious. <laughs> <coughs> Hey, share a smile, they're contagious. Can you imagine a day without smiling? Whew, that would be outrageous. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with Crazy Nate. Make sure to leave a thumbs up if he left you feeling great. Have fun and we'll see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe.